Hey everyone, my name is Alden. I'm um, Drew. And welcome back to uh, Super Meat Boy. This is going to be episode 3. Um, last time we left off, we were tackling this Dark World um, area. Basically, the, um, the added... Um, the added bonus on this one is that you have this, uh, spinning fan. Giant line of saw blades chasing after you. <laughs> you have an undefeatable version of the, uh, of the boss of this world. Yep, it, it's very, very similar in that you just need to keep going. <laughs> so I think you were trying to get, you were, uh, killing yourself because you were trying to get the, uh, bandage here. Yeah, like, I, I normally don't try and spend a whole lot of time on the bandage, but, like, that one just feels so close every time. <laughs> like, I'm there. there is a way. Like, you can, you can definitely make that jump and slip, uh, slip between those saw blades. And I just... There we go! I got it right there. And it's just... I just really, really wanted to get that. Uh, and of course, I you die at the very end. Exactly, you don't keep it. <laughs> no. I guess that that kind of ties into uh, something we were we wanted to touch on in that um, this game doesn't give you checkpoints. Um, that that is kind of a um, I guess a trope, for lack of a better term, of 2D platformers. Um, certainly, back in the day. Uh, you had checkpoints and lives and continues and all that fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it, I, I kind of like it this way. I don't know, call me maybe a masochist, but, like, the... It can be frustrating when you get to the end of this... You know, granted, these episodes, these levels are, like, ten seconds long, but, you know, it can be very frustrating when you go and you finally get that, uh... You finally get that bandage, you get to the end, and then a saw blade kills you right at the end and you have to start over. Um, but I think that's part of the charm with this game, actually, in that, um, again, the levels are so short that it's not a big deal, um, so it doesn't feel as big a deal as before, um, so it's sort of just, you know, you have to, you have to deal with that frustration and move on. Um, another game like, you know, Dark Souls, you know, you'll get, you'll get, uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, like, you'll, you'll get to a bonfire, um, you know, you'll get to, bon to the bonfire in, uh, Undeadburg, and then you have to n navigate that entire area, and then you lose against the demon. You you've gotta you know you've gotta go back <laughs> to that bonfire and start over. Um, you know that you know I'm not, I'm not saying a checkpoint system is bad. Um, it's just that I don't know a lot of the games nowadays. Um, you know, let me put on my old man pants and <laughs> a lot of hand holding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> back in my day. Um, <laughs> if you got a checkpoint, you only got one, and it was at the exact halfway point through a very long level. Um, yeah, you know. the uh, Super Mario and, and Sonic games. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, like they, they need no, they need no plugging from us. But you know, with <laughs> Super Mario, you had you had a checkpoint um, system where, um, like, let's take Super Mario World. You had a checkpoint system where you run uh, through. It's like it's like a like a ticker tape tape at the end of a race, and you get a little one in the middle of the level that you can choose to either go through or not. Um, and if you go through it, if you die, you go back there. If not, you go back to the beginning of the level. Um, yeah, it, it's pretty interesting that um, even back then, whether it was intentional or not, they kind of gave you this ability to, uh, um, not really artificially, but uh, on your own, you could increase the difficulty beyond uh, what the game in and of itself had intended yeah um and there there are you know pretty much any game you can find people who will give themselves um restraints um and there's there's a method of playing pokemon where uh, if a pokemon faints in battle you have to release it <laughs> yeah uh, it's basically like pokemon with permadeath um you can play dark souls using only the whip um <laughs> Yeah, there's there's tons of games where you can impose these um, restrictions on yourself, uh, and some games like even the only crazy thing like that that I've ever done myself is in Castlevania: Portrait of Ruin. Uh, the hard the difficulty setting in that game was based on a, a level cap, 
So like you had hard mode level 50, hard mode level 25, and then there was hard mode level 1, which was basically just crazy man mode. <laughs> you had to beat the whole um, game at level 1. You, yeah, you have to beat the entire game at level 1, and I believe uh, when I, I beat the game, I was in like the 60s or 70s in my level. Uh, you know, when, when hard mode level 50 is supposed to be somewhat challenging, hard mode level <laughs> 1 is completely ridiculous. Yeah. And you know, it, it took me um, a, probably about a month after I had beaten the game just to beat it again on uh, hard mode level 1. And it was the kind of thing we just have to keep plugging away and just make it to that next save point. Yeah. And, you know, I, I was able to finally do it after like a month, and that Dracula took like a week <laughs> in end of himself, because, of course, he's the final boss, his attacks are all really hard to dodge, and they'll kill you in one hit if you're level one. Yeah. And you, you do like no damage, so it took like half an hour each time I tried before I died. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, people do some ridiculous things, but I will say that after I beat Dracula at level 1, I felt like the greatest gamer in the entire world. Yeah. Like, that—that that is one of the greatest feelings I've ever gotten from a game. Like, that sense of accomplishment is just, like, unparalleled. So I certainly understand uh, where people are coming from when they give themselves these uber challenges. Because that reward, that feeling is just so rewarding. Yeah, and I, I, I guess that that really lead, um, lends credence to the whole concept of Super Meat Boy. I mean, you'll see that with this, like, you know, everything we've done thus far has been this one level. Um, you know, <laughs> getting Still on chapter one, guys. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It was due to the dirt walls. But um, you know, getting getting the A plus in in a level there, it's you know. It's a reason to go back and play this game. It's a reason to keep trying at a game. Um, you know, once you've beaten Super Meat Boy, then go and lock all the characters by getting all the bandages. Um, you know, the completionist there, the rewarding is just insurmountable. You know? Yeah, I really feel like I, uh, again, I don't think they're artificially padding. I do feel like extra playable characters and you know we don't have any yet but when we do um, I will showcase, showcase them off a little bit and they really do they do play differently and they feel different and it almost makes it like an entirely different game like playing through as Super Meat Boy is gonna feel different than playing through as one of the characters I haven't unlocked yet um, <laughs> no spoilers don't don't want to spoil anything but yeah it, it does really feel different and it almost makes me want to play through again as the various characters um, one thing I will say though, while we're at this level, um, I hate this level and I want it to die. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think this is probably the uh, the A plus that gave me the most trouble. Yeah. Um, when we were when we were doing the um, when we were just actually playing through this, uh, you know, through the game just to record the uh, the video there. <laughs> like you know, you take you take a couple deaths and you know it's whatever you shrug it off. But this one uh, really <laughs> really got your spirits down. <laughs> it gets my dander right up. <laughs> it really gets my goat. <laughs> really gets my goat. Um, yeah. So this this whole dirt wall mechanic, like, in, in in so much as I have been singing the praises of this game's level design, this is one thing they do. I I do not agree with at all. Um, to me, Super Meat Boy is about like fast paced uh, platforming action. At, there's finally the A plus. There we go. But those dirt walls, they just force you to. They just bring the pace to a halt, and like that just. I don't know. You shouldn't really mess with the pacing of your game unless you've got a really good reason for it. Mm. And I feel like just making the level harder to A plus is not that good of a reason for making you slam into these dirt walls. Yeah, I mean, I guess the uh, I guess the argument for <laughs> these is that. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like Super Meat Boy is not so much just about the, the fast pace as it is really having to pay attention to your every move. Because, you know, if you, the thing with Super Meat Boy, I mean, you, a lot of other games give you a lot of leeway. This whole game is um, built around simply the fact that the controls are so dang tight that if you press a button, you got to be, like, 100% sure you meant to press that button. So, having... Um, I mean, it sort of leads credence to it, like, 
if you land on one of those, it's going away, and you won't be able to land on it again. So you have to make sure that you know you meant to destroy that wall. Yeah, um, and I, I, I don't mind it um, in the instances where it's the kind of thing we have to keep moving forward and like you can't go back, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But it just those specific instances where you just have to like slide down the wall of dirt and then wait for it to go away. Yeah. Like that that that's just really annoying in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can I can agree there. This other guy took me long enough to get. I don't know if you noticed beforehand, but my previous best time was 5.09 seconds and the uh, cutoff was 5 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I was over by 0.09 seconds. <laughs> that uh, if if you look at the bottom right uh, corner of the screen next to the level, you'll see a little white flag and then the clock. The clock is your best time, and the white flag is the time required for an A+. So that is cool that they give you that information, they give you that goal to hit. Um, though I will say that from a usability standpoint, I do wish that they would give you that information at the end of the level, like when you get uh, Bandage Girl. Uh, if you don't get the A+, plus, it would be nice if they gave you the whole, the comparison, the A+, plus versus your time, uh, just so it gives you a goal to hit. Yeah, yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice to know how... Although I can see that being uh, equally as frustrating when, when they give you your time and it's like, oh, I was one, uh, 0.01 seconds shy! <laughs> yeah. Warp zone. You know, I think that's the first time in this entire uh, this entire recording that we've actually done that. Yeah, no, I, I just kind of took it for granted that you know it was happening, but you know the uh, so I guess I should mention that the um, the audio is uh, I just had to stitch together the soundtrack. Um, turns out, uh, p- record posting. Let's Plays over the internet is not something that is easily set up. Uh, we're still trying to figure out that perfect That's setup there. Um, and uh, sadly enough, the soundtrack does not have the Warp Zone soundbite on it, so I was not able to uh, put that in there. Though uh, I was, I have been, I've tried to cut together um, loopable versions of, of all the songs and everything so that. It is as close to the original experience as I can get it, uh, but there are no sound effects, and sadly, no warp zone! <laughs> oh, man. One of the cool things about this um, um, is that this is almost sort of training for the rest of it, because, you know, here you have, the, um, you have the three lives and whatnot, but you don't have that time restriction, so instead of having to rush through everything, you can take your time and think about where you're where you want to land so if you want to practice landing on that one spot um you know the square one one square big um this would be the place to do it i would think yeah um definitely there are a lot of opportunities to get that uh just down right on the uh in in, um, in the warp zones um and definitely uh, i must say i wholeheartedly agree with the decision to not have the timer and the lives in the game at the same time Mm. because uh, encouraging the player to speed through the level and get to the end as fast as they can and then giving them a set number of lives are not conducive to the same uh, mindset so they're they're very uh, there's there's this dichotomy of speed versus uh, precision and I'm, I'm just really glad they don't try and make you fight between the two. Yeah. Yeah, this is, uh... I thought this was well done, especially. So, on that yeah. note, we are, uh, coming up on time, so... Uh, next time, we're gonna go ahead and continue on these warp zones. Catch you later! <laughs>